Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at temperature and how it affects the behavior of matter. Now, this directly follows on from the last lesson about solids, liquids, and gases. So if you haven't checked that lesson out yet, I really strongly suggest you do so because it's going to be very, very helpful for you. So we already know that everything is made up of particles, but energy affects the way that particles behave. So here we can see we've got the particles in a solid and they're vibrating as we'd expect the particles of a solid to do. So there's no gaps between particles and they're vibrating around a fixed point. Particles are not free to move in a solid. Now we can see that these particles are being heated and the more energy that particles have, the higher its temperature is. So as you heat something up, the particles gain more energy and they move faster. So we can see that the particles in this solid are vibrating faster now that they are hotter. But what's also true is that the less energy a particle has, so the lower its temperature, the slower it moves. And we can see that with these particles here. As they've been cooled down, they vibrate much more slowly than when they were hot. And if a temperature change increases or decreases enough, then a change of state can occur. So if you heat a solid up enough, it can turn into a liquid. If you heat a liquid up enough, it can turn into a gas and so on. So it's this temperature and energy that causes change of state. So let's have a look at what happens in a change of state. So if we start off with a liquid with the particles arranged in our random fashion but still touching, and we heat a liquid up, we add energy, vaporization occurs. Now there are two other words for vaporization, evaporation and boiling, and they're not quite the same thing. Vaporization is just a general term, which means that the liquid turns into a vapor, the particles turn into a gas. If we cool that gas back down again, it loses energy and it condenses and it becomes a liquid again. If we cool that liquid down even further, it loses even more energy and it freezes and it becomes a solid. Now, if we heat our solid up again, if we give it more energy, the solid will melt as the particles gain energy and it will become a liquid again. So we can see that a liquid, if we cool it down, if we remove energy, will freeze. If we heat it up, if we give it energy, it will become a gas. So, Energy removed from the surroundings and added to the particles causes a temperature increase, so solid to liquid to gas. Energy being added to the surroundings and removed from particles, we have a temperature decrease, so gas to liquid to solid. Fairly obvious. But what's interesting is we can move directly from a solid to a gas if the conditions are correct, and this is called sublimation. And we can also move directly from a gas to a solid if the conditions are right, and this is called deposition. Now it's quite rare to avoid the liquid stage, but it is possible. So sublimation is solid directly to a gas, and deposition is gas directly to a solid. So let's have a look at the difference between evaporation and boiling. So they're both processes where a liquid turns into a gas, but they are not the same process. So if we take a beaker with some water in it at 40 degrees Celsius, evaporation is going to occur, even though it's below the boiling point. Now, evaporation occurs at any temperature between boiling point and melting point. So for water, melting point is zero degrees Celsius and boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. So evaporation will occur at any temperature between these two points. But evaporation only occurs at the surface of a liquid. It does not occur anywhere else in the liquid only the surface and it's a very slow process it doesn't happen very quickly boiling is very different so it only occurs at the boiling point so for water this is exactly 100 degrees celsius and it occurs throughout the liquid so particles turn to gas anywhere in the liquid for evaporation particles can only turn to gas at the surface for boiling it can occur anywhere and boiling is much faster than evaporation because the particles have more energy. So it's much easier for particles to overcome the intermolecular forces and to escape and become gas particles at higher temperatures. This is why boiling is so much faster than evaporation. 
So let's have a look at the different factors that affect evaporation. So the first thing to point out is that different particles have different amounts of energy. The ones with the most energy can overcome the intermolecular forces and are most likely to escape and become gas. The more energy you have, the easier it is to break free of those forces. But the surface area of a liquid is also incredibly important. Because evaporation only occurs at the surface of the liquid, the larger the surface area you have, the greater the area that evaporation can take place in. So here we've got a test tube and a bowl, both at the same temperature. The test tube obviously has a smaller surface area, so water can evaporate much faster from the bowl because it has a much larger surface area than the test tube. So evaporation is faster with a large surface area. The temperature is also incredibly important because particles with most energy can overcome the intermolecular forces. So at higher temperatures, particles have more energy. This makes it easier for them to overcome any intermolecular forces holding them down. Evaporation is therefore much faster at higher temperatures. An increased wind speed also sweeps away evaporated particles because it gives them energy, but it also lowers the humidity in the surrounding areas, and this increases evaporation too. So we've already mentioned evaporation, but what about sublimation, because that's very different. Well, sublimation occurs when a solid changes state directly and becomes a gas. At no point does the substance enter the liquid phase. And we can see in this little video clip, carbon dioxide, which has been frozen, or is also known as dry ice, is being added to a beaker of water. Water is obviously at a much higher temperature. The dry ice receives energy, it heats up, and it changes directly from a solid to a gas. Sublimation is taking place. Now, only a small number of solids do this. So dry ice, which you've already mentioned, is one, and iodine is another. And heat is always required for sublimation to occur. It cannot occur without extra heat energy. And substances can also change directly from the gas phase to a solid phase. So here, we can see a picture of sublimation taking place. It's very, very obvious that it's changing directly from a solid to a gas. The liquid phase is being avoided. Gases are responsible for creating pressure. Every time a gas particle collides with the surface of the balloon, it creates some pressure. The more collisions there are, the greater the pressure is. The harder the particles hit, the more pressure is created. So these particles, because they're hitting the outside, are creating an inward pressure in all directions. But there are also gas particles inside the balloon, and they're colliding with the inner surface of the balloon. They're also creating pressure, and it's being created in all directions. Now, if the particles move faster because the temperature increases, the rate of collisions inside the balloon is increasing. Also, the particles are hitting harder. So this increase in frequency and the increase in strength of collisions increases the pressure inside the balloon, and it causes the balloon to expand, to increase in size. If the balloon gets colder, however, the opposite is going to happen. The particles will move slower, they're going to collide less, and therefore the balloon will decrease in pressure and will shrink. In summary, as particles heat up, they gain energy and they move faster. As they cool down, they lose energy and they move slower. If a substance gains or loses enough energy, it can change state. Sublimation is the process of changing state directly from a solid to a gas, so you're avoiding the liquid phase. Evaporation is a change of state from liquid to gas, and it occurs below the boiling point. And evaporation only occurs at the surface of a liquid, so particles only change from a liquid to a gas at the surface during evaporation. Boiling is also a change of state from a liquid to a gas, but it only occurs at the boiling point. And when boiling occurs, particles change from liquid to gas throughout the whole liquid. And pressure in gases is caused by collisions between particles and a surface. This is also true of liquids. If you put liquid in a container, it will also cause pressure as its particles move and collide with surfaces. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've understood a lot. If you have, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to us if you do. 
If you're really enjoying these lessons, you can also check out our biology lessons on YouTube, or even better, you can check out our website. The address is in the description below, makescienceeasy.com. We've got loads more lessons for you there and loads of excellent resources to help your learning that we just can't include on YouTube. So until next lesson, keep on learning.